So we all grow up trying to look for something and we don't really know what we're looking for. But eventually the world tells us what we think we need to find. And we go towards all these different outlets that never really amount to anything. And as you grow older, sometimes they tell you to keep going for these but harder and you find emptiness in this. And then eventually what ends up happening, hopefully for you as well, is that Jesus tells you and shows you everything that you've always been looking for and it's nothing that you have been doing. Today we're going to talk about a little something as you see by the title. It's a very important message I think today that we need to spread in that the way that our culture is seemingly going is that number one, they're trying to get rid of masculinity or men trying to be like men and we're not talking about men that have a lot of pride and, and need people to follow their orders and always think everybody else is wrong. That's not the type of men we're talking about. We're talking about people that follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. And how you do that is by reading the Bible and what you'll end up understanding as you continue on your journey with him is that it's a very different outlook of masculinity that is taught in the Bible that we are then taught in this world because there's two types it seems like right now. There's number one that the whole world is trying to depict a very feminine man that doesn't work for anything, is very lazy, you know, doesn't lead anybody and just wants a bunch of excuses on why he can't do something. But then there's the other guy that they're trying to teach you. And it's the guy that basically steps on everything in order to get to where he wants to go and just bullies his way into being a man. And that's not necessarily the way you need to go either. What you need to understand about masculinity and, and what a man needs to be and all of you that are watching my channel, I hope that this touches you, is that it's neither one of those things. It's not the feminine man, and it's not the overly quote unquote masculine guy. And again, I, in my life, tend to lean toward the more masculine fighting dude. And God continually checks me and tells me that that's not necessarily right either. There's a type of person that God wants you to be as a man, and it's a leader. But what a leader is, a leader doesn't tell people necessarily what to do. He shows them. And how he shows them is the most important thing that you could possibly think of. If you are one, hopefully you're doing it right. And if you're not, well, just like myself, you want to be the best one. And that is a father. In this society now, both sides are two different flips of the coin aimed at the same direction of a very selfish life. Someone that only lives for themselves, whether it be a feminine guy that never wants to try or do anything for anyone else besides himself, or the masculine dude that just bullies people around for his own prideful desires. They're teaching basically the same outlet, which is what the devil wants you to do is go for selfish things. Fulfill yourself because that's what you should be doing. You only get one life. So do everything that you can and everything that you want to do and don't worry about anybody else. And this is so wrong. And this is something that we all have to come up to is that that's not the way a man is supposed to be. That's not what God is and what he wanted us to be as men. You know, a lot of people will read verses like Colossians uh, chapter 3 verse 18 that basically says wives submit to your husbands but if you're not the type of dude that God wanted you to be then she never should submit to you and that's something that all of us men really have to take into accountability is that if you're not the dude that can lead your family right you don't deserve any of the submission you should be submitting to God first so we're gonna read a couple verses that I think are very important on this and it's something that a lot of us have to really look at ourselves in the mirror and realize that maybe we might need to ask God for forgiveness, repentance, and ask God to show us what we need to be. So the first one's going to be Ephesians chapter 5, 25. Men are responsible for protecting their families, which may include physically protecting them, even to the point of sacrificing their lives. You know, something that I used to do when I was not going to church, when I did not read the Bible or follow Jesus Christ, is that I used to want to intimidate people. It made me feel good to make people feel scared of me. And it was such a pathetic way of going about being, where I wanted to basically get in your head to make you fear me. And honestly, it's what a lot of us are taught. A 
lot of us end up going through, you know, when we grow up in poor areas, they basically tell you to be feared by everybody. That's how you get where you want to go, is to be feared by everyone. You can't show God's love if people fear you. Actually, Andrew Tate said where he didn't see God in Christianity because in Islam they fear God. But how can you show the love of God through fear? It doesn't make any sense. Now you should fear God because God is the creator of everything. But if God was kind of typically the type of dude like I'm describing that just bullied you into respecting him, you would never feel the love from him. 69% of you are not subscribed to the channel that watch these videos. And I, I wanna say, honestly, it's a free way to help support the channel. If you just hit that subscribe button, it helps me make better content and it helps me keep figuring out what videos you like, what you don't. So please do me that favor. If you want to support the channel, just hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I appreciate every bit. You need to understand that you need to be able to protect your family. It may not necessarily mean that you can at all times, but you need to be the person that stands in front of them and decides to possibly, for your wife and for your children, make that decision. Hopefully none of us ever come to it, but make that decision to put your life on the line as part of being a man. Mika, chapter six, verse eight. God requires men to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. This includes standing up against injustice, defending the vulnerable, and seeking fairness in all dealing. The first part of that is very important. Justly, seeking mercy, and basically humbling yourself. Again, I wanna talk from my own personal experience for you. Everything that is produced in the world is to boast and to become a prideful, money showing off chimp. God deserves all the worship. We should just be thanking him for what he does. Humbling, because masculinity, that is the basis of what masculinity is. Masculinity is not boasting. It's not becoming this big, strong, prideful ape that tells people what to do. That's not what it is. Masculinity is being humble. Being humble in your mindset and being humble that you serve God. You serve God in the best way and that the ability to serve God means that you don't know anything and that you never know anything and that you need God to constantly show you what you are doing. I have a lot of this because of my past relationship with my father is I was very hard to accept when I was wrong. And it's because of the way I was brought up, I was constantly fighting with my father and I never was able to accept anyone's other side. It's something that God taught me and, and really has continual humbleness in myself and has humbled me over and over again of accepting when I am wrong. The epitome of masculinity, the epitome, just like what Jesus said to Peter, is forgive them 70 times, times seven. Humbleness is the epitome of masculinity. And that's what the world is trying to rip out of men, is that in order to be a man, it is to be the dude that has 4,000 women and millions of dollars. But when you look at all these people, and this is gonna be the final point, you see that there's nothing in all of it. Yes, we should strive to gain money to protect our families so that they can have a better life, so that you can show them the way. Yes, we should fight in order to put our life on the line for our wives and our sons and daughters, and for people that rely on us. And yes, some of these things you should be doing for a godly way. But the way the world is describing it, the prideful man is what masculinity is. And this is not what Jesus Christ taught us. Jesus Christ taught you to be the man that accepts being a servant over being a leader. And when you do, you become just that. So if you want to be that dude that wants to sit there and pretend he's masculine by listening to Andrew Tate motivation, instead of realizing that the true masculine man was only ever Jesus Christ, and the only way that you become like him is to follow in the steps like him. So if you don't want to do that, turn this video off. But if you want to do that, follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and really truly become a man that tries to combat evil, step up for his family, and do what he needs to do to show the love of God. We'll keep watching. It smells like hard work and determination, boys. Hit that like and subscribe. As always, praise God, love God. He's great all the time. Love you all. Peace.